I have a question that relates to hydrogen peroxide. So can microbial inoculants be used with oxidizing agents such as hydrogen peroxide or hypochlorous acid? Will it kill off those microbes? I think that's a big concern for a lot of gardeners. They are using hydrogen peroxide to, in order to kind of sterilize things and prevent fungal root pathogens, for example. But they also want to use the microbial inoculants. They also want the benefits from microbes. Can they be used together? Yeah, short answer, yeah. And I know that because I've, I've worked with them for long enough. And so uh, I'll qualify, you know, as a PhD microbiologist, I have to be really good at two things. One is understanding how to grow and propagate microbes. And the other is to be excellent at killing them because they have to keep sterile, constant sterile, sterile environments and grow the microbes they want and not grow the other ones. And so really, really familiar with disinfectants is what we're talking about. These, these disinfecting agents, you know, there's antiseptics, which we use on our living skin, um, like alcohol is an example. And hydrogen peroxide is actually considered uh, an antiseptic to a large degree. It's also used as a disinfectant in, a, in, in cultivation practices. The disinfectants are typically the bleach, hypochlorous acid, um, parasitic acid, H2O2 is an example of something that's been used. And in general, to be uh, to kill microbes, you need two things. First of all, you need an agent, a disinfecting agent, that can either uh, create a static or a, or a, or a cytal property. Static means freezing growth. Cytal means killing growth. And so those are the two properties that, that qualify as a, as a appropriate disinfectant. And there's a concentration and a time required on top of that. And so I've tested a ton of disinfectants trying to kill microbes just to see what it would take to kill them based on recommended applications. And there are very, very few agents or disinfectant agents in, in cultivation that are recommended for the appropriate time and concentration to effectively kill many microbial solutions. And it's because it's not concentrated enough and the time is too ephemeral. It doesn't allow them to sit in that solution. And so I, I would recommend that it's, you know, don't change a thing. If you're having good success, far be it for me to change, but make sure that you could in integrate with confidence, the biology you want to, I, I would say it's better practice to stagger um, a disinfectant application from a, from a microbial just intuitively. I mean, I wouldn't want to mix bleach with my microbes and say, okay, have at it, go. A, a bleach agent or a hypochlorous acid or, or any type of chlorine, H2O2, it is more so to uh, mitigate risk, to maintain a level of cleanliness through the lines, through anything that, that, might, be, uh, that might represent a risk over time if it, if it grows. Once microbes hit the rhizosphere zone, that habitat is so complex that they're buffered from much of that anyway. And so if you think about roots, and I don't know if anyone uh, on the call or, or you have ever seen roots at the macroscopic level, it's nice to see healthy roots just uh, at the macro level. And they're just white, you know, structures. And you're like, oh, man, that's pretty. If you look at it under a microscope, it looks like the Canyonlands of Utah. There is surface area that's engineered um, naturally that ebbs and flows, and there's just nothing but microscopic canyons that the microbes embed in. And so the surface area is inherent for maximum absorption, and that's what roots function are. You know, the more surface area, the more it can absorb. So microscopically, these things are going every which way. So there's so much habitat. And there's not a penetration typically in applications for disinfectants to actually get in on into all that surface area. And so it's a little bit of a misnomer as far as I'm concerned that you can sterilize anything biologically because you can't. You cannot sterilize the root zone. You cannot sterilize the air. You can't even sterilize a table. You can manage the concentration or the population or density of different microbes, if you do that well enough. In a root zone, it's absolutely impossible to sticky sugar substance with a bunch of microbes in it, no matter how you start. What I would say is you can either select the microbes you want in there, 
or let your environment select for you. And typically, if you can have a choice of putting beneficial microbes, knowingly putting micro uh, beneficial microbes in that substrate, in that root zone, you're mitigating a lot more risk than just taking the chance that something from the environment is going to come in, see an occupy a space that's open and in fact because you know not all microbes uh are are beneficial let's just say this clip was brought to you by ac infinity use discount code mr grow 15 to save on any of their gardening products